But thanks to a 76-year-old self-described democratic socialist, and now a whole host of candidates running openly as socialists, maybe it's time to understand it. We're looking at some of the biggest myths told about the S-word. Immediately what cries out with Bernie Sanders is he doesn't understand the Scandinavian economies. The Scandinavian economies you could try and label as social democracies. Believe me, they're far from anything perfect. But what more accurately describes these economies is not democratic socialist, you know, e economies, they're not democratic socialist because they're economies with relatively low government regulations. They have um, in a number of these countries, they do have, you know, strong economic business freedom. However, they've got this kind of mixed economy. They have something what you call a social market economy. Now, if you look up the definition of a social market economy, you will understand where I'm coming from. In other words, they're kind of taking the ideas of something off the basis of a, a free market not quite free market, but off the basis of it, and they're using, you know, they're, they're trying to combine this with the the welfare state and the higher tax rates, and it has its problems, and we can talk about Norway all on a separate topic in its own, um, just understand that, that it's not as black and white as just saying here's democratic socialism and that's it, because if anything, if we were to turn to Great Britain between 1945 to 1979, under the prolonged testing of democratic socialism, you could pretty much look at the Communist Manifesto planks and whether you talk about the, the Manifesto plank where it was the abolishment of private ownership, we saw a lot of that with regards to the heavily nationalised economy. Um, the second one on the Communist Manifesto planks was the heavy progressive income tax. That's exactly what Britain saw in that period. The other one was the nationalisation of the central bank. Again, that was something we saw in 1962 with the Bank of England um, creating an exclusive monopoly. Um, another one that we saw was the nationalisation of transportation into the hands of the state and communication. Well, that's precisely what you've seen with British Telecom, etc. You've seen all of it being nationalised into the hands of the state, transportation, all of that was in the hands of the state through nationalisation. And another one that we've seen of the Communist Manifesto planks was free education. So this wasn't, you know, something just out the blue. I mean, that's me giving five already. And no doubt there's there's more I could go into, but in that same time period, the British economy was an absolute dire strait, it was a, a, an absolute disaster. Um, and of course, those who are democratic socialists, they try to push the blame off elsewhere. We see that same pattern everywhere socialism fails, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, Cuba, Venezuela, um, Greece or anywhere, um, you unfortunately see this pattern where instead of accepting that it doesn't work, uh, they try to push the blame off elsewhere and it just so happened to be that the blame was being pushed onto the Tories. Now I wouldn't exactly say the Tory government was exactly anything spectacular itself. Um, between 1955 and 59 uh, you saw Ted Heath who was the Labour Cabinet Minister in that period. He became the Conservative Party leader between 1965 to 75. And uh, about the year 1970 to 74, he was the Conservative Prime Minister. Um, and this was a guy who was strongly opposed, was an enemy of Margaret Thatcher. And he was anything but, he was anything but the true meaning of what a conservative is. Um, he he was responsible for extremely high inflation uh, and all the borrowing and spending would catch up in Britain and eventually we faced the blackouts, we faced the, the very problem in the late 1970s with of course the winter of discontent 
and the economy was plunging towards hyperinflation and yeah I could go into the whole topic again a lengthy topic on Margaret Thatcher but there's no point um, because again that's a, a whole topic on its own but the democratic socialism was a failure now one of the quotes that stands out most for me is one um, by a Labour um, Party member of the, t- of the time. Um, and he came out and he basically said along his words, this is a democratic socialist by the way, and he comes out and he says in his own words, the gentlemen of Whitehall really do know it's best for the British people than the British people do themselves. Now, it's, it's quite interesting that he would say that because that's the exact attitude that Westminster took. Westminster took this self-serving attitude that it seems to think it knows better for the economy than the people do it themselves. Um, so, um, why did the government take that attitude? Was it just because they're so selfish, they're so up themselves? Partly. But the, the main reason for it is because when government is faced with the knowledge problem, when government's faced with the economic calculation problem, there's no way that the government can know your needs and wants. It, it doesn't hold the information of market-driven prices in order to, to understand your needs and wants. It's impossible for the government to know this. The government cannot know your needs and wants. It's nationalised everything. It doesn't know how to operate it. It doesn't know the, 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 the production that goes into everything. And that was one of the main reasons why under British Rail, when it was heavily nationalised, um, right through up to the 1970s, etc., when British Rail was under nationalisation, the trains were outdated. And the reason why the trains were outdated is because once once you're faced with the economic calculation problem and knowledge problem, there's no way for the government to know um, the information of what goes into um, the technical know-how to improve the technology to update these trains, etc. Um, now, I'm not saying that today's market within the British Rail Service is any better, especially with the cost, because it's not truly private as some people believe. Again, even that is going into a whole topic within its own. But that's really the basis of it. That's why you cannot have democratic socialism. Um, and, it, it, and, and it goes into this whole thing where I could sit and explain about prices, what they are, the importance of them, why when you're faced with the economic calculation problem I can sit and explain that, um, but again that goes into a whole topic that so and explains why socialism doesn't work. So I hope that's covered that for you.